All right, this is Rick's Corner, and I have Eddie Giuliani, and this is going to be the second part from the first one you saw because he was so interesting and so fun, and you guys asked for more, so I got more. And there here he is. Look at this, sitting in front of the gym. Still sitting in front of Gold's gym 50 Still, years. Yeah, 50 years. 50 years later. Still waiting for Joe Gold, yeah, well, whose birthday was yesterday. Oh, that's right. Joe His, Gold, whose birthday was yesterday. He, 88. He 80, would have been 88. 88. Yeah, he's with Zabo now. That's right. Well, there, there's a lot of them up there right now, a lot of our old friends. Well, don't say up. No. You don't have to say up. They could be they over were, there. They could be somewhere. Let me ask you a question. What I have, I'm curious about something because I had talked to uh, Larry Scott, said he'd give me an interview. And now, when, when we were training at Gold's here in Venice, and then we had Geronda's Gym in the Valley, that was a whole different group of people. That's like a, a, high, sc that's like a high school rivalry, for, for example. They had their own way of training, right? Yes, they did. And what was that? How did they train compared to us? Well, first of all, you know, Vince didn't really believe in a lot of things that were basic that I, everybody did, like squats. Right. You know, he didn't really believe in heavy squats. And so, you know, he liked his rules to be uh, obeyed in his gym. And if not, you know, he didn't really go over too big. So he had his own way of doing things. He was more not on the bulked up body. He was more on the uh, uh, symmetrical body. So he didn't, he didn't. A push too much on um, heavy iron, right. like we did on his side. We were more brawny here. Right. He was more the—I don't want to say theatrical. He was more athletic, aesthetically pleasing As, bodies. That's right. That's what he was. That's an awfully big word for yeah. us. Yes. But right. we had Larry Scott, Don Hallworth, Bill McCardle. Yes. Um, oh, there's another guy, Steve. Oh, I can't Steve Zinn? No, 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 no. <laughs> he had Steve. Uh, Steve. Di uh, Steve. Uh, Steve Reno. <laughs> Steve Reno, that's Steve what I'm thinking Reno. of, Steve Reno. Yeah, Steve Reno, we got it, we got well, it. Now, the, all those guys had great bodies. Yeah, I think even Johnny Baylor trained there for a while. Oh, did he? I think so, I'm not sure, yeah. Well, it seemed like to me that none of those guys ever crossed over to Venice to train with us. They always stayed in the Valley. Well, you've got to remember now, they've lived in the Valley, too, right. most of them. And, uh, you know, he had a lot of theatrical people, too, that lived in the Valley. Oh, a lot of big names. A lot of big names that, that, that worked the, the, the movie business. Movie stars. Yes, movie stars. Bill right. Smith. Bill Smith was one of them. Clint Eastwood. Yes, I was told. Uh, uh, the Beretta. Oh, uh, Robert Blake. Robert Blake. That's right, Robert yeah. Blake. So all these guys that lived in the valley trained there. And, right. Um, it, 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 well, you have, did you ever see the place? Oh, yeah, I trained there. All right, so you know it wasn't a huge place. It wasn't a real big, sprawling gym, but it had a... A homey atmosphere, right? It did. It was very small. Yeah. Yeah, all the all the benches were wood. He made his own stuff. Yeah. He had his own technique, and yeah. he was a crotchety old guy. If he didn't like it, he kicked you out. Right. Not unlike Joe Gold, who no. would do the same thing. Right. Who would? <laughs> now, and also, he lived. What, did he live upstairs? He lived upstairs. Okay, so you see, he lived and he worked in this little area. And if you think of all the bodybuilders that we knew when we were coming up, when we had, which basically had nothing but the iron, right. nobody had any money, nobody really went far away. You hung around the area where the gym was. Yeah. So you lived where the gym was, the beach was where... You stayed, you eat, you... Everything was in the gym, or, I mean, was, 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 was sort of... That was the center hub. Yes, it was the hub. So the people that stayed in the valley stayed in the valley, and every once in a while, one of them would come here for something. Every whoa, wow. it was like they came in from North Carolina. Exactly, and yeah. that's only 15 mil right. minutes away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I, so I, there, there were some guys that went back and forth uh, and trained at Vince's once in a while. Yeah. I went there. I didn't really care for it. It wasn't my cup of tea. And like he, he said, I don't know. It just the atmosphere was different. Yes. You know, it's it's like you can come here to Los Angeles, go from Sherman Oaks to Encino, and you have a whole different group of people, and it's only a mile difference. You go to North Hollywood, it's a mile difference. It's a different people. And these guys were in North Hollywood. There's just a mentality. Uh, Char Charlie Faust trained there. Oh, yes. Chuck Faust. And uh, That's the, right. these guys, I'd see them at contests, and they were all good guys. But it's almost like going East High, West High. You had West High School, East High School. They were a different thing. They didn't have uh, any animosity towards one another. It's just the way it was. Okay. Not to uh, to, to, to teach you your business, because you've been around, to, how many long? About 100 years you've been doing this. 101. 101 years. Um, Remember that Joe Weeder, who controlled this whole thing in that magazine, and right. everybody would kill to be on a cover, okay. including me, everybody. In other words, you would say he didn't favor that gym for some reason. No. He was mostly on the west side, right? I don't he think he ever went into that gym. He, when he did all of his shooting down here at Gold's right? and on the beach. Right. Exactly. So, I mean, this was the place, if you wanted to get in... In a magazine, this is where you have you work. Well, let's yeah. talk about that for a minute because when I when I lived in Bakersfield, I saw the magazines and I moved here in '69 and joined the gym. And all of a sudden, all the guys you see in the magazines become your best friends. 
This is the way it worked out. We had a group yeah. of people, and we all hung out together. And these are people yeah. that were stars in bodybuilding magazines, like the people that watch this show say, God, I only want to go to the West Coast to meet all those guys. Well, we did. We, we, we lived it. Yes. And that's a one-time opportunity. Yes. It'll never be that way again. No. Never. And you got to remember, and you remember this, that under that one roof on Pacific, the original right. Gold's Gym, was the greatest talent ever, ever, and, and that congregated at one time under that one roof. They all came from all over, from, from the East Coast, from Europe, right. from all over. Everybody came here because it was that magic place, right? I think that airplane's going to drop a bottle of protein on us. I hope, it's, I hope it's Weeder. Yeah, me too. Well, that's the other thing. Joe Weeder ran the magazine. Joe Weeder's a bigger-than-life person with yes. all the bodybuilding magazines. Yes. But Joe was a normal guy who came to the gym, trained with us, and took us to lunch. Yep. He was yep. part of the deal. Yes, he was. And he I'd was. see him come in the gym. Would you say he was totally in love with bodybuilding? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. That's it, why it, it worked. It was a passion. Yeah, it was totally a passion. Even in the magazine, he was hands-on in the art department. Here, there. He did everything himself. Even though he had uh, 80 employees, he had to oversee everything. Exactly. Exactly. He was totally, whatever you say about him, and everybody has wrong and rights, right. he was totally uh, obsessed with it, and he loved it. He, it was a passion for him. He loved it. He would have probably loved to get on stage and win shows when he was young, but it never happened. Well, I still plan on going out and seeing him and interviewing him. Oh, wow, that would be great. Yeah, I think it would be really good. Oh, that would be wonderful. But I, I saw him walking to the gym one day, and I've said this before, and he picked up the 65-pound dumbbells and yes. started curling them. Oh, yeah. Cold. Oh, yeah. Where the hell did you get that strength? Oh, yeah. He didn't I, look like it. Oh, I trained with him a few times. I trained with him in the Henry Hudson uh, Hotel uh, many times in, in New York when he ran the, the shows back in New York. All the shows were done in New York then. Uh, in the Brooklyn Academy of Music. And um, uh, everybody went back there once a year to enter all the big shows, the America, the World, the Olympia. Everything was held back there. Yeah, I know. In, in the Brooklyn Academy of Music. Then it's moved now. Now it's all in Vegas. But uh, well liked. Well, we had a lot of strange characters. I remember Steve Neese, Moby Dick. Yes, Moby Dick. And he had to wear two wallets to make it look like he had an ass because he was so flat, but yes. big, broad shoulders. Moby Dick. Come in the gym with this big... Look at big... the name. Yeah, I know. Yeah. And, and he'd come in the gym, and he'd pick his nose on the bench and then fall off of it. <laughs> and then he'd try to get into wrestling and went up to Stu Hart's in Canada, tripped over his own feet, and that was the end of that. Oh, I think oh. he passed away. Yes, he did. I heard he did. I heard he passed away. Moby Dick, look at the names we had. We had some great well, nicknames. Well, yeah, everybody had a nickname. Seymour was a snail. Seymour was a snail. Bug-eyed Louie. Uh, uh, Zabel was the chief. The chief. The chief. Uh, Bugsy Siegel. Remember Bugsy? Uh, was, there, was there a nickname for Bugsy? Well, it was Bugsy, because his real name was Ben. That's right, so it was Bugsy. But he used to drink yeah. vodka Ken, and milk. Ken Waller was red, yeah. of course. Yeah, and uh, let me see. We know uh, Franco Columbo was the Sicilian Samson. That's right. The yeah. Sicilian Samson. One of the no, 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 the Sardinian. Sardinian, Excuse Sardinian. That's Excuse right. Oh. And, and Arnold was I always, correct myself. The Arnold Sardinian was always, Samson. Arnold was always known as the Oak. The Oak. Yeah. Arnold was the Oak. Yep. Dave Draper was the blonde bomber. Yeah. Yeah? Uh, oh God almighty, what names, what names? Now, Joe built all that equipment in his garage. Yes, he did. He had piece a, by piece. He had a two-car garage at home in Venice here, and he built the stuff out of a garage, which is probably unheard of today. Yeah. How he did it, and th that was another one, dedicated, and I mean, he was just in it for the love, and he just, it was in his heart to do it. Was, it. it was the best equipment I've ever used. Well, he was uh, he was uh, uh, an innovator. Yeah. He was uh, he was the first guy to do heavy duty equipment in this business. Of course, now the machines today are, are wonderful. Right. But but no one had that foresight to do huge large pulleys. No one had the foresight to use the, the steel, the gauges that he used. That the benches wouldn't shake when you. Right. And right. his dumbbells, the handles. The handles. I the always handles talk about that. Million dollar handles. Yeah. Those handles I've never seen anywhere. Today they're thin, they're thick. They don't grip your hand properly. Right. And, and those dumbbells, you could lift a, a, a quite a bit of amount of weight, would not even feel it. I remember when he used to build some machines. He used to call me over to come over to the little house <laughs> where he lived and see if I would be comfortable in the machine. And then if it did work, then, right. then the next day he would get, say, Arnold, because now Arnold was the other extreme, right. big. And Arnold would come in and see if it would fit him. Uh, and uh, so he, he, you know, he was just dedicated on it. He was just unbelievable. Yeah. <laughs>